This is John Renault's Rachel, and I have it in the color Palm Springs Blonde, which is part of their California Blondes collection of shades. It's very well loved. It's very beautiful. I feel a little bit like a California beach girl wearing this style for sure. At the beginning of my wig journey, I just loved the idea of these beautiful waves, long style. I was never able to grow my hair to this length and have this much volume. So I was really attracted to this style right from the beginning. But let me tell you, when I got it out of the box, think back then, you know, it was the beginning of my wig journey. I hadn't worn too many wigs at that point. My hair is typically very thin, very fine. I was not used to having a regular density amount of hair. So it felt like too much for me. I can tell you that as you wear your alternative hair and get used to having, you know, a regular amount of hair, you do start to get comfortable with the wigs. And for me personally, I've been able to transition into wearing fuller volume wigs and it feeling more like me. Wouldn't necessarily have been the case at the very beginning. And at the time when I first tried John Renault's Rachel, they didn't have their Rachel light version of this. So John Renault has a, a collection of wigs that's called their light collection. And basically it's slightly different cap construction, but the biggest difference is that it comes with lower density than the equivalent original version. So for me right now, this original Rachel feels very comfortable from a density perspective. But if you love this style and you're at the beginning of your wig journey, perhaps check out the Rachel Light version. If you're new to wearing wigs, I wanted to share with you a few tools that I find really helpful when you're getting your wig straight out of the box, okay? Number one is a water bottle. You can get this on Amazon. What this is gonna help do is help it help to bring those fibers to life. You can also spray it along that zigzag hairline to help break the part. You may hear that term and other reviewers talking about breaking the part. Simply said, all it means is taking the zigzag out and parting it in the space or place that works for you. And one of the best tools to do that with is a rat tail comb. If your wig is heat defiant synthetic fiber, you're always going to want to use a wide tooth comb. But truth be told, I prefer using a wide tooth comb on my regular synthetics. Rachel is a regular synthetic, meaning you can't apply heat to this style to change the curl or the wave pattern. If your wig is made out of synthetic fiber, you may find that when it comes to you, it has a little bit of that unnatural shine. And let me get up close. I haven't done anything to this. There is a little bit of excess shine. Now that shine will dissipate after time, over time, with wear and with washing. But if you want to get that wig out of the box and wear it today, then utilize some dry shampoo. Now this is one that I just have at home. My preference is the John Renault dry shampoo. The particles are very fine. It doesn't leave your hair looking and feeling dusty. So if you are a synthetic wig wearer, I would pick up John Renault's dry shampoo. Okay, so let's look at Rachel herself. And as you can see, it's a long wavy style. What you can't see is that it is 100% hand tied and I will show you that in a moment. But I'll do a turn so that you can see Rachel on all sides. So in this view, at least from my eye, I can see some of that unnatural shine and that's where I would grab my dry shampoo and give it a spray to help dull that shine just a little bit so that I could wear her straight out of the box, okay? And here is the back. My left hand side. And back to the front. So Rachel has a lace front. I'll get up close so that you can see that. I think it's done quite well. It's got a full monofilament top and you can see my part is very messy. And I sort of do that on purpose because in my eye and to me, if the parting is absolutely perfect, sometimes it's a bit of a giveaway that you're wearing a wig, okay? So having that full monofilament top allows you to part this piece 
wherever you wish and get that illusion of scalp. So it's not too heavily threaded that the parting looks unnatural. One of the things that I really love about Rachel is this seven inch bang along the front. So you can style it, push to the side like this. You could part it in the center if you wanted, you know, more curtain bang style like that, or you could part it on the right as well. So I love that flexibility. It's, you know, giving a little bit of comfort. If you're somebody that likes bangs, you could absolutely trim more traditional bangs into this piece if you like. You know, when I first get it out, when I first got it out of the box, and you may experience this as well, I did need to play around with where these front sections wanted to lay. You will find that the hair fiber wants to go into a certain direction. If you want to change that, simply take your water bottle and give it a spray and play around with those fibers to get it going in the direction that you want it to go in. But I really love the this seven inch section in the front. So my face from hairline to chin is seven inches, almost the identical length of this front section here on Rachel. So the crown on Rachel is 15 inches, the sides are 10, and then the nape, which is measured right from the back down, is also 15 inches. And altogether, this wig weighs 4.5 ounces. So for a piece with this type of length, 4.5 is a very reasonable weight for a wig like this. Earlier, I mentioned that Rachel comes in a light version. So this being 4.5, the light version is just slightly lighter in weight at 4.2 ounces. Okay, let's go ahead. I will take Rachel off because one of the other things that I absolutely love about this style is the 100% hand-tied cap. Typically, a hand-tied cap is going to be a higher price point than a cap with wefting. And that's because each one of these fibers are individually sewn into this cap. A hand-tied cap is going to give you, they say, more natural hair movement. Um, it's also incredibly soft, okay? There is a decent amount of stretch on this hand-tied cap, most of the stretch is coming from this section here versus these two sections. So you do have a decent amount of stretch in this cap. This is an average size cap. It, it's fitting my 22 inch circumference head beautifully. There is that full monofilament top. So if you remember earlier, I showed you parting it in different spaces and getting that illusion of scalp. It's this fabric here that is allowing for that scalp illusion of scalp, okay? And then your lace front, it's not extended. So the lace front does not extend into the ear tabs. You do have felt covered ear tabs, so they're very soft and they've got what we call med metal stays in them. They're tiny little pieces of metal that allow you to fold or bend this ear tab so that it sits very close to the side of your face, okay? And it's, Rachel's got an extended nape, which is referring to the depth of this section of the wig. This is the nape, and the fact that it's extended means that it's about double the width of what a regular nape would be. Having an extended nape helps to secure that wig to the base of your neck. I really like this cap feature, but particularly I like this cap feature on shorter styles, just to ensure that that wig is staying at the base where we want it to. And then Rachel has two Velcro adjusters so that you can adjust for your head circumference. What I recommend you do is that when you first get the wig, make the adjustments, play around with it to the point where it feels good. Your wig shouldn't be tight, but it shouldn't be loose either. It should be to the point where the lace is taut across your forehead once you find the placement that works for you, you don't need to play with that every time you apply the wig. You just keep them in the spots that work for you. Here's another tip for you. If you have a wavy style like Rachel at home and you comb out those waves and you think, okay, I like it like that, but I preferred how it looked before I did that. 
all you need to do is take your water bottle, give it a spritz, and this will return to how it was before you combed it out. I'm not sure if you can notice the difference. After I combed it out, after spraying a little bit of water on it, it has returned to that beautiful wave pattern. And then I did it on this side as well. Let's talk about this color, Palm Springs Blonde. It is definitely a cool, ashy blonde. It's really beautiful. So you've got light ash blonde, you've got pure white, as you can see going through this particular shade. I like a dynamic color. I think it reads a little bit more natural. And then you've got a dark ash blonde root. It's really beautiful. Here's another tip for you. The same shades on a regular synthetic, like Rachel, versus the same shade on a synthetic HD fiber can look a little bit differently. And I want you to know that because let's say you have Rachel. You love Palm Springs Blonde on Rachel. So you order John Renault's Hout, which happens to be an HD synthetic wig. And you order it in that Palm Springs Blonde because you love it. Palm Springs Blonde will look a touch warmer on an HD synthetic piece than it will on a regular synthetic. I hope you've enjoyed taking another look at not a brand new style, but a classic John Renault style, which is Rachel in Palm Springs Blonde. And I hope some of these tips were helpful for you. So if you're interested in this piece, head over to wigs by pattiespearls.com. Be sure to use my discount code Erin, E-R-Y-N-N, -N, 25 to save. Stay well and stay safe. Bye, everybody.